Hello and good morning. This is Michael at Keenly speaking. I'm the CEO of IT Novum. Um, very happy to be here and a hearty welcome from my side at the OpenStack Summit in Paris. Today I'm going to talk about open cloud storage. Um, of course, you know, at the OpenStack Summit it does make sense to talk about clouds and we will give you some ideas on how to build the perfect smart and open storage platform for OpenStack. You might have not come across IT Novum yet, so um, I do not want to just go you through the full set of marketing slides, just a very quick idea of what we're doing. Our mission is basically to help customers build and run open source solutions for the data center. We have the vision that you can establish a data center on top of 100% open source in the back end. And you know, there's a lot of things to do, monitoring, service management, IT processes, cloud management integration, storage, everything on open source. Yeah, and you know, when you just want to build a cloud, there are a lot of things you can do when it comes down to storage. One of the things you really want to use is software-defined storage as part of your cloud environments. And there are a lot of real good reasons for doing that. Of course, you want to have the elastic performance, the capacity for different workloads, Want to use multi-tenant services? You will have the integration of ZAN, of NAS, and the object store, hopefully into one platform. And most of all, you want to be based on open standards. This means on a technical level, on an open API. With OpenStack, you basically have the choice to use that. OpenStack provides a set of documented and open APIs so you can basically choose the right underlying storage platform, really depending on your needs. Either you want to go with your legacy vendors and just try to integrate the stuff you already have, or depending on your requirements, pick the right choice. This could be either software-defined storage as a platform for OpenStack, or even open source, or perhaps a combination of both. And I'm going to show you a little bit how to do that. So we talked about software-defined storage, and of course there's a lot of other reasons why you might think about using open source when you set up your OpenStack clouds. You know that the data growth in the next couple of years will be growing very quickly, and uh, your budgets might not be uh, growing as quick as the growth rates are. And as you can imagine, there's a huge storage growth opportunity by using open source because it saves you probably a lot of money. The next thing, open source gives you a great advantage as you can reduce the vendor login by using commodity hardware and not going to the big incumbent players and spend a lot of money there because their huge margins really drive, uh, are driven by their form of bundling everything together. So if you combine software-defined storage and open source, you can get to, for example, this type of framework. On the left hand, you see a lot of widely available and well-known type of open source tools. Um, combine these very smart, make the right framework on that, and try to build a comprehensive open API. And of course, there's a lot of work to do there, but if you look at this framework architecture, you see it could be done on the level of existing open source products which are available right now. I'm going to show you a couple of these use cases for an open source based software defined storage solution within an open stack environment. The first, how to manage commodity storage nodes with a clever graphical user interface. The second, the automated provisioning of resources through an API which are currently not covered by the uh, current release of the Cinder API. The third one, how to provide the storage infrastructure with built-in high availability and redundancy. And the last one, at least for these use cases for today, how to monitor every storage configuration item instantly. So let's really focus on the first uh, use case and scenario which I want to describe here today. How to manage your commodity storage nodes. You know, OpenStack really automates the provisioning process. But, as we all know, 
open source does uh, open stack sorry does not really manage your storage needs and the underlying infrastructure so there's quite a huge gap between that and you know if you're being an administrator of uh, storage or of clouds there's a lot of more things to do basically what you need is a type of integrated <coughs> operating system if you want to use commodity storage platform this means you definitely at the first major thing you need a single point of administration means basically a graphical user interface which covers all the different underlying open source tools that is quite easy to manage. And of course, this needs to be integrated into the OpenStack as well. The second thing I'm going to talk about very briefly, if you look at the API of Cinder, for example, you see that there's a lot of things within Cinder, but more or less rather simple functions like volume create, delete, snapshot create, I think you know all that. But if you compare that with the traditional high-end storage system, you're missing a lot of functions, like uh, consistent snapshots, which are probably aware of the application, like uh, databases, you need the cluster functionality, mirroring, high availability, and all this stuff, which you're pretty used to from the legacy systems, but if you look at the open uh, stack API, you see they are not reflected right now. And that's a huge gap we really need to bridge if you want to use commodity hardware on um, to as um, a reliable solution for your enterprise grade open stack deployment. One of the major things here in terms of functionality is getting a high availability for open stack when you're talking about using commodity storage. You know, OpenStack doesn't bring HR high availability out of the box. If you look at the Cinder API, there's uh, no words about high availability. So what you need to do, you need to just get the right open source tools to build these on top of the standard search stuff to have the high availability function for OpenStack. And of course, as you all know, high availability really depends on your type of setup, your data center policy, you're doing a local or a meter type of clustering. You're doing a synchronous, asynchronous type of application. Uh, what about the amount of cluster nodes? There's a lot of things you need to really take into account. And um, of course, there's a lot of Linux-based uh, tools, um, like DRBD, Corrosing, Pacemaker, and a lot of others, which really help you to work on that. But what you really need to do is you need to combine these tools in a very, very smart way. It's all there, but the big challenge is to combine it. <coughs> the next brief scenario I'm going to talk about is the monitoring. The integration of OpenStack, uh, especially Cinder, into all the rest in terms of administration and management is quite fragmentary right now. So what you want to do, you, if you set up a new instance, you want to monitor this instance as well. You look like uh, if uh, enough space is left, uh, if it's performing, um, and all the things. And you know there are quite some open tools, open source tools around there, like for example Nagios, which helps you in monitoring this stuff. And it could be quite easily used, but if you want to set up everything on the top of standard open source tools, it could give you a real huge challenge. So what we do, um, for example, we help you and collecting all these open source stuff which is available right there and build a software defined 100% open source storage system on top of that which is already pre-configured for the cloud. So we really keep the hassle out of you guys. You do not need to do everything by your own. Uh, you can just use stuff which we already made on top 100% open source. So this means on one hand side providing all the things you need in terms of cloud storage, all the functionality in terms of smart, software-defined storage you already know from other vendors, and uh, of course the standard stuff like unified storage um, with all the things. And of course, as we are just an open source provider, there's a community edition, which is of course for free, and we would be happy if you just uh, look at that, join the community, there's a lot of things to do, and again, it's open source. Feel free to contribute to that. There's a lot of things to be done, a lot of things which you can integrate uh, to really reflect your requirements for the cloud. And of course, if you need enterprise support or other things, just let us know. Happy uh, 
to be here in Paris. I hope you enjoy the day and the next couple of days. I think it's a great event. Thanks a lot. Any questions, feel free to contact me right now.